Welcome to part two of our Boulder Dash in Pico 8 tutorial. And uh, today we're going to actually create a sprite that moves on the screen. So uh, let's get right to it. As you can see, I already have the um, three Pico 8 main functions set up, which is init, which is called once when the program starts. We have update, which is called uh, 30 times per second. And we have draw, which is also called uh, 30 times a second, um, if there is not too much to draw on the screen, that is. And we have a clear screen, so we get a fresh start um, from the beginning. Let's start by defining a player sprite or a player variable. And um, we do this with the um, table type and that goes like this. And we call this one player one because we are going to do a two player game. And that defines a player sprite. So the, that is the name of the variable, which is player. And this defines that this is a table. And you can uh, think of a table like a keychain. You can have different types of keys in that, and the keys are variables. So if I, for example, want to have an X coordinate for the player, I can do this like this, and a Y coordinate I can do like this. So this would put the player in the top left corner of the screen. We will define a speed. So since my player sprite is eight by eight pixels, I want to move it eight pixels. So for now, it will always go eight pixels up and down and left and right. And we will smooth this out a little um, in the upcoming episodes. But for now, we want to just uh, control it with the keys, uh, the cursor keys and uh, work, uh, move eight pixels in every direction. And so we have just one um, speed and that is eight pixels. Then we have a direction. And normally the, the player is facing, or the player sprite is facing to, let's check. Here are my sprites. You haven't seen these. Um, and this is my player sprite. It actually has some movement, but we are not using this in this episode. We are just going to use this uh, number one sprite to move the sprite. You can see it's facing right. And if it's facing left, or if the player goes left, then we want to flip the sprite. And so we tell uh, Pico 8 that normally the direction, direction is false. So direction left is false because the sprite is facing right. We will use this in a minute. Um, we will not go into animation today. And we don't want to, uh, we will also not go into the um, idle sprite function. So if you know Boulder Dash, if you move um, Rockford to the left or the right, he faces left or right. There's no up or down sprite. It's also left and right. And if Rockford isn't moved for a few seconds, then he goes into idle mode. So he's facing not left or right, but straight uh, to the player and we're not going to use this today we will check this out soon okay so um, <clears throat> and we will put all of this into our init function so that it's called once the game starts okay so if we start this now we only get a black screen because the screen is deleted or cleared 30 times a second, not much to see. So what we have to do now is we have to put the player sprite on the screen. And let's do this first. So we clear the screen and then we go and say spur, which is for sprite. And remember we have sprite number one and we want to display that on the screen and we tell him Oh, the machine where is player1.x 
r1.y, the values we stored up here. And I think that is pretty much it. Yeah, and there he is. No movement yet, so we have to react to the key presses of the cursor keys and then move the sprite accordingly. But for now, it's there. So, okay, that wasn't too hard. Now, in the update function, which is called 30 times a second, we are going to check if a key is pressed. And in Pico 8, you can do this um, with the if keyword. So if, and then button press, BTNP, and then you tell it which button. And Pico 8 has special icons for that. So you can um, hold down Shift, and it's uh, U for up, D for down, L for left and R for right. And for now we want to go to the to the right. So we press shift R and you can see this is a little arrow pointing to the right. Um, then we want to increase the player's X position. So player one dot X uh, plus equals eight. And that should move no, it won't. Uh, yeah, we always have to put an end there. So I'm coming from C. There are brackets. We have the end here. And if I press the right button, you can see it's moving. Quite nice, huh? But it's only moving to the right. So let's add uh, the left. Else if, and this else if is uh, written together as one word. If button press and now we press shift and we have left and now we have right now we want left then player one dot x minus equals eight so we are uh, subtracting eight pixels and that should move the player in the other direction and lo and behold it works only thing is the player's always facing right. So to change that, we have to tell this draw function which type of player to draw. So right now it's drawing the sprite one without the mirroring or the, the, the horizontal flipping. So it's always using the normal sprite and it's not the flipped sprite. And what we can do is we can use our player one dot direction left variable which is false if the player moves to the right and is true if the player moves to the left and let's see what that does nothing so it turns out we have to put a width and a height in here if we are using the flip function so we have to put a one and a one here which pretty much says it's uh, unscaled and let's try this again Yeah, it's still showing always a right sprite. That is because we didn't set it to true or false. It's always uh, false in our case, so it's always facing right, um, as seen here. And what we do now is we go here, and if the player moves to the right, we have to set this. And if the player moves to the left, we have to say tell it that it's true. And if we do this, you can see left, uh, right, left, right, left. It always stays in the last position we put it. So it's still facing left if we moved left the last time and it's still facing right if we moved right the last time. So we can move left and right and we can also move off the screen, which is not too cool. So let's first fix that. And for that we go in this move left and right and we check if we have reached a specific point, which is the screen um, state. And it's much easier here because we just have to check if player1.x 
is smaller or equals zero, no, it's smaller than zero, then player one dot x equals zero. So if we subtract from player one dot x and it's smaller than zero, then we set x to zero. And that should do this. Can't move off the screen, at least in this direction, but I can still move off the screen in this direction. And for that, we know that the screen dimension is uh, 128 by 128 pixels. And if player one dot x is greater than 120, then, always missing the then, then player one dot x equals 120. Let's try that. Oh. And now we should not be able to leave the screen. Yeah. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. So this is 16 um, map tiles, if there were a map that we can move to the left and the right. And now we do the same for the Y coordinate. So that we can move our player up and down. And we say else if button press, and we hold down shift and uh, press up, or U for up. And then going up means that our player, player one dot Y, minus equals eight. So we subtract eight because we are going up. Um, and if player one dot y is smaller than zero, then player one dot y equals zero. So that is that. We don't have to care about the player's direction because we are just using the last direction the player is facing. So if he's facing right, we are using the right sprite and left, left sprite. Okay, and then we do the same in the other direction. So if button press is down, which is shift D, then we increase by eight. And if this is greater than 120, then it's 120. And go. And just like that, we can move around the screen. Yeah. So that is moving a, a sprite around on, in Pico 8. And as you can see, it's not too hard. So before we leave for this episode, let's do a little cleanup. And um, I pretty much want to have all these functions as small as possible and for that we create a new file and there's a common function in pico8 which is this and we call this the player stuff and what we do is we put all of this in here and we call this function init player1 Then we go and put this call in here. And as you can see, this makes for a much smaller function and it's much clearer that all the player stuff is in here. So let's try if this still works. Yeah, it does. And the same goes for the update function. And we take all this and we create and update player one function. And we put all of that in here. And then we call the update player one function right here.
And we will leave the draw function like that for now, but we will put all the draw player stuff in its own function uh, in the next episode. So let's check if all still works. And all looks quite good. So that's it for today's episode. And uh, in the next episode, we are going to smoothen the movement of the player and we are drawing a map. And maybe if we are lucky, we can also do a title screen and some scoreboard. Hmm. That would be nice. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.